From Cardinal Television Studio, I'm Madison Kelly with your official news brief. Brooklyn Center ex-police officer Kim Potter is charged with second-degree manslaughter and booked into jail for the killing of Dante Wright during a traffic stop. The Wright family is expected to hold a press conference, but attorney Ben Crump, representing the family, said no conviction can give their loved one back. Camila Burnell has the latest. Former police officer Kim Potter has been charged with second-degree manslaughter in Sunday's deadly shooting of 20-year-old Dante Wright during a traffic stop. Behave Attorney Ben Crump, representing the Wright family, reacting to the news. In less than a week, the district attorney made the decision that we will charge this officer and the family of Dante Wright will get to have their day in court. Potter, a police officer with the Brooklyn Center Police for 26 years, was booked into the Hennepin County Jail Wednesday after the charge was announced. Brooklyn Center's then police chief said Potter appeared to have shot right by mistake. During the traffic stop, Potter seemed to intend to use her taser, but fired her handgun instead, killing Wright. Both Potter and the police chief resigned after the shooting. A community demanding justice emerged in the streets of Brooklyn Center for three nights, resulting in violent confrontations with police. With the news of the decision to charge the former Brooklyn Center police officer with manslaughter comes a prolonged period of continued grieving, hurt, and understandable anger. The maximum sentence for second-degree manslaughter is prison for 10 years and a $20,000 fine, according to Minnesota law. Potter's attorney, Earl Gray, has not commented on the charges. You must be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 to attend the Buffalo Bills and Sabres games this year. The professional football and hockey teams are based in Erie County, New York. The county's executive announced Tuesday he's hoping to pack out the games in the fall. Our plan is that unless you are vaccinated, you will not have entry to the stadium. It is easy. It is safe. We can then guarantee 70,000 plus people at the stadium, enjoying the Bills, cheering them on. I can't imagine how loud it'll be next year with 70,000 fans. You can be one of those 70,000 fans by getting vaccinated. It's as simple as that. The stadium and hockey arena are owned by Erie County. Officials say they've worked with the teams to ensure everyone who enters the facilities are safe. The FBI is investigating a cyber attack on the NBA's Houston Rockets. A spokesperson for the organization says that it appears unknown attackers tried to install ransomware on a number of its systems. It's not clear whether any personal information may have been exposed in the incident. Some cybersecurity experts believe it to be the first professional U.S. sports team to fall victim to such an attack. They also say the type of ransomware against the Rockets is particularly problematic because it causes data loss. That means organizations would unlikely be able to recover all their data, even if they give in to the criminal's ransom demands. The school district in Aledo, Texas, says it has zero tolerance for racism and hatred. That's after a group of ninth graders reportedly created a fictional online slave auction targeting their black classmates. Brooke Rogers has more. Alito ISD says it learned of an incident with students from the Daniel 9th grade campus involving racial harassment and cyberbullying. Sources tell CBS 11 it was in the form of an online, quote, slave auction in which students pretended to sell their black classmates for a dollar to a hundred dollars. My thought was, here we go having to deal with this again. Eddie Burnett, president of the Parker County NAACP, says he knows what the victims are going through. It makes you feel a, a sense of powerlessness and worthlessness. Alito ISD says it launched an immediate and thorough investigation involving the district's police department. The case is still pending, but the students did receive disciplinary consequences. The district also said there is no room for racism or hatred in the Alito ISD, period. Using inappropriate, offensive and racially charged language and conduct is completely unacceptable and is prohibited by district policy. I think kids make mistakes and I think sometimes um, those mistakes get highlighted and, and that's how we learn. Christina Donnelly, whose children attended Alito High School, hopes this can be a teachable moment. Well, I think that the school can come up with some long-lasting and far-reaching solutions that will ensure this won't happen again. 
The district says it is focused on just that. Burnett says education and conversation are critical, especially because he says this isn't the first time Alito students have been bullied for their race. If people are having a mock uh, slave trade or uh, slave auction, uh, then they have received information that this is okay. We have a problem in Parker County. It's obvious. A cutting-edge breakthrough involving 3D music-making spiderwebs is as cool as it is creepy. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Hey music fans, ever heard spiderwebs? Hey, no, no, not that spiderwebs. That is a good song, though. I mean actual spiderwebs. The brainiacs at MIT have found a way to turn spiderwebs into music, and the result is as creepy as the concept. The team took 2D laser scans of real spider webs and turned them into 3D digital models. They then assigned each strand different frequencies, turning the digital web into a sort of stringed musical instrument that played back an eerie tune as they explored the virtual model. The simulations help researchers better understand the architecture of the webs, and because spiders use vibrations to communicate, they say it opens up a world of possibilities. By recording these vibrations and using artificial intelligence algorithms to replicate them, we'll be able to speak with spiders and communicate with spiders. Technology really can do some amazing stuff. Take, for example, hiker René Compion, who found himself lost in the vast California wilderness. After a night alone with no food or water, Compion used the last of his cell phone battery to take pictures of his location, texting them to his roommate. The roommate then sent them to the sheriff's department, who posted them online asking for help. The pics were spotted by a satellite mapping enthusiast who came up with GPS coordinates that helped pinpoint Compion's location, allowing officials to to chop her in and pull him to safety. Voila! For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. That's it for today's news. For Fisher News Brief, I'm Madison Kelly.